Anyway. You see, what I want to teach them this morning, without my nice technology this morning, which would have been so much better, you know, it's time for us to take care of our souls. Is that okay? Take care of our souls in that give it to Him. Taking care of our souls in that giving it to Him. Your soul is your mind, your will, your emotion, your intellect. You know, you know this thing, you know? Okay? Because I want to explain to you biblically wise um, about people that went from but was with Jesus and also after Jesus they didn't take care of their soul but later stage they submitted and then things changed for him okay don't we all love Peter you know don't we love Peter I love Peter because I think we all have a bit of Peter in us you know and I'll explain to you that just now so Matthew 16 Matthew 16, from verse 13 to 28. And this is, this is now, here is Peter with Jesus and everything. And he says here, from verse 13, he says here, When Jesus came into the, into the region of uh, Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Who do men say that I, that I the Son of Man, am? He, he, already, asked, he already answered his own question, because I am means God. Okay? So, automatically, he answered already his own question. He gave them the answer to it, I am, I am. The Jews custom to understand that I am means God. So, I said to him, some say John the Baptist, some say Elijah, others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. In other words, they say, so, you like this, you like this, you like this, you like this. Okay. He said to him, but who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered and said to you, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. But Jesus answered and said to him, Blessed are you, son Simon by Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And I also say to you that you are your Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, on the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. In other words, here at the moment is Peter, and the God's revealed to him that this is Jesus, the Son of the living God. Okay? So he had that revelation coming straight from God. No man revealed it to him. So he had an encounter. He had a true Wow, this is God. Okay? How many people do you know have that? Did you have it? All of us. You come to a place in your life where you're truly like, this is Jesus. You know? Doesn't matter what, but this is God Almighty. You had an encounter with Jesus. You had an encounter with the Holy Spirit. You had an encounter with God Almighty. Nobody can take that away from you because nobody explained to you God. You just had an encounter with God. That's what I try to explain to people, please. Um, it's not just what I say and whatever. You have to have regular encounters with God. Like myself, I have regular encounters with God. If it's in my car, if it's here, whatever. But I have that on a weekly, daily basis. It's not just Sundays. It's a regular thing for me. Okay. Then he goes on. Then he says, um, And I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loose in heaven. Now, whatever you permit in heaven will be loose. What, whatever you permit on earth will also be permitted. So you see, what do we permit? You remember that I taught the whole teaching that spiritual and natural works hand in hand? So whatever you do in this natural influences the spirit. Whatever you do in the spirit influences the natural. Okay? That's what you need to understand. When, you're, when you receive Christ, and also in general as well, if you're not saved. Then he commanded his disciples that they should tell no one that he was the Christ. From that time, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things from the elders and chief priests and scribes and, killed, uh, and be killed and be raised from the third day. So now his questions come up, of why did you can't say he is the Christ, whatever? Because there's many speculations because of that. Uh, I believe maybe he says it was not the opportune time to reveal it to everybody, you know. Um, he wanted to reveal itself to people. I don't know. The whole thing is, but Jesus wants to be revealed, okay? But maybe, naturally, he didn't want to reveal too much. Then he, would, um, he couldn't move where he had to do. He couldn't do his work in three and a half years, how he should have moved, okay? So, a bit of theology in there from the background. From, uh, okay? Verse 22. Okay, verse 21. From that time, Jesus began to show he, to his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things from the elders and chief priests and scribes and the, 
and be killed and be raised on the third day. In other words, this was his destiny, his purpose. He had a purpose to fulfill, okay? And that was it. But how many, now the second verse says, Then Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, Far be it from you, Lord, this shall not happen to you. How many people, you know what, is trying to hamper your purpose and destiny? The heart might be right, but the head might be so wrong. Do you understand what I'm saying? And this is what God, Jesus knew that, you know, Peter was not, you know, he, he was busy hampering his purpose and destiny. Groot back. You know? How many times I say to people now recently as well with things happening, I said, this person, you know, we warned, we did the so-and-so and whatever. Now let them be. Let's not interfere. Let them come to the end of themselves. Do you hear what I'm saying? Now people still want to interfere to help. But by helping them, you're not helping them. <laughs> you're making it worse. Do you understand? Sometimes people just want to help, help. It's called rescue mentality. People just want to rescue people. Stop rescuing people. They're going to, rescuing people is going to cause you to be killed. Do you understand? It's going to, res- it's going to um, cause your, your destiny to be hampered. But he turned aside to Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan. You are of offense to me. For you are not mindful of the things of God, but the things of man. Yet Jesus said this. Peter had a problem. He had a fear for men. He had more thing for man than for God. You'll see what I'm getting to the scriptures. He was more concerned about the things of man than the things of God. Then Jesus said to him, to his disciples, If anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. And for whoever desires to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. For, whatever profit it. for what profit is it to a man if he gains the world and loses his whole, own soul? Or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? You see, he talks about the soul. Never said spirit. He says, for the Son of Man will come into His glory of His Father and, he will, and with His angels, and then He will reward each according to His work. As soon as I say to them, uh, are some standing here who shall not taste death till they see the Son of Man coming in His kingdom. Okay? You see, there's many things that we need to understand is that, yes, Peter, Jesus saw that he, there's certain things in his soul, his emotional side, his, his humanity side, he didn't want to give up to the Lord. Okay, he, had a, he was a man pleaser. He was more concerned what people thought and so forth. It was easy here, he was standing by Jesus and said, No, Lord, you brought me much, you can't do this, whatever. He was the man at that moment. But then here at Luke 22, verse 31 to 34, here Jesus predicts now the whole thing with Peter. I wish I could have drawn so nicely. <laughs> and the Lord said to Simon, Simon, indeed Satan has asked for you that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for you that your faith should not fail. And when you have returned to me, strengthen your brethren. He was prophesying future stuff. You see, God, I say to people, God uses the devil to make us better. You don't like that saying, do you? <laughs> but God uses a devil sometimes, you know. Not because he uses evil. Because you're not willing to surrender things in your life. Do you hear what I'm saying? And God will use it. God's an opportunist like the devil is an opportunist. To make us better, never to destroy us. And God will, will say, it doesn't tempt us with evil. But I pray for you that your faith may not fail. And when you have returned to me, strengthen your brain. So God is... There's another teaching I want to do, intercession, Jesus interceding, and also the Holy Spirit is interceding. Jesus didn't not just leave him. He still prayed for him. Do you understand? He said, no, Satan came to serve that wheat. Okay, you know, I'll leave you up your own devices. No, he said, no, I'm there. I'm, I'm praying for you, you know. But he said to him, Lord, I'm ready to go with you both to prison and to death. Then he said to him, I tell you, Peter, the rooster shall not crow this day before you will deny me three times that you know me. In other words, he said, you know what? Yes, Peter. How, I call it Peter syndrome. 
How many people come to me and say, oh, no, I'm safe, I'm running, and I'm not missing a service, I'm running with this, I'm doing this stuff, and her, 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 her. you know, I'm all for God now, things happening, whatever, because you, you're getting the teaching, you're standing here, you're excited about in the presence of God. You keep it up for two weeks, and you slowly but surely they fade out. Do you hear what I'm saying? Luke, I think 14, talks about the cares of this world. Comes and snatch, you know what I'm saying? Now, this was Peter. He was adamant at that moment, I see people on a regular basis, and their hearts are sincere at that moment. They are genuinely, Peter was here, genuinely sincere. Lord, I will die with you. I will go to prison with you. I will do this thing with you. Do you understand? Because at that moment, he was adamant. I said, this is sincere. It was very sincere. But it goes on and says here, Matthew 26 from verse 69. Oh, don't worry about up well, you're busy up there. If, if it bothers or whatever, don't, don't worry about it. If you can see, if you guys can see the up stuff up there or not, if not, just make it dual again at the back, otherwise we, you see what they is distracting the people. Just make it dual again. Okay, otherwise just worry, don't worry about it. Now Peter, this Matthew 26 from verse 69 to 75. Now Peter said, sat outside in the courtyard. In other words, this is where Jesus being crucified now. And a servant girl came to him saying, You also were with Jesus of, of Galilee. But he denied it before them all, saying, I do not know what you are saying. And when he had gone out of the gateway, another girl saw him and said to him, those who were there, This fellow also was with Jesus of Nazareth. But again he denied with an oath. An oath, or he, oath, it's not a good thing. I do not know this man. And a little later those who stood by him came up and said to Peter, Surely you also are one of them, for your speech betrays you. Then he began to curse and swearing, saying, I do not know this man. Immediately the rooster crow. And Peter remembered the words of Jesus, who had said to him, Before the rooster crow, you will deny me three times. So he went away, wept bitterly. In other words, what happened is he had a problem. You, you see in the beginning, he had a, you, a mindful of man. He had, a, he had a fear concerning man. And he says what happens is here, here comes Judas, and he's like, no, it's not me, it's not me. Afterwards, he said, but your speech betrays you because we, the people that was with Jesus spoke life, spoke good stuff, go whatever. And then suddenly he said, no, no, no. And then he swore to say, oh, when he saw it's like, oh, the people that's with Jesus can't swear. So uh, we are wrong. Do you understand? But he did that, so he cannot be part of this whole thing. Do you understand? How many people are still like that today? Many people, am I right? You know, all for Jesus. When you're all in the right camp, but we in the world, it's anything but Jesus. Because <laughs> you're scared what this guy's going to say, what this woman's going to say, whatever's going to do. Do you know what I'm saying? I'm not saying being all bold and proclaiming God everywhere, but when you need to say, I'm, a, uh, I'm, I'm full of God, whatever, you need to stand up for that. But Paul, you see, it's not just the whole thing here with, with um, um, a Peter. He had a soul issue. He had a soul issue. Don't we all have a soul issue? Some form of emotional issue, uh, whatever you could be. Lack of better, a sin issue, a habit issue, addiction issue, uh, anger issue, emotional issue, whatever issue. And Peter denied the Lord. See, Peter was never wanted to allow the Lord to come into that part of his life. Now, you have the amazing is um, John 21 from verse 14 to 19. This whole thing was here. Then Jesus showed himself to the disciples and, and then he went back to Peter and then he went to restore him. He went to restore him because remember he denied him three times and he comes and he says to him, he says, this is now the third time Jesus showed himself to the disciples after he was raised from the dead. Jesus restored Peter. So when he um, had eaten breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me more than these? And he said to him, yes, Lord. You know that I love you. He said to him, feed my lamb. And he said to him again, 
second time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? And he said to him, yes, Lord, I know you love me. He said to him, tend my sheep. And he said to him the third time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? Peter was grieved because he said to him the third time, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. And he says, um, and he prophesies, mostly when he said to him, when you were going to be younger, good up yourself and walk where you wishes. Uh, where, uh, um, I said to you, when you were a young, younger, you good up yourself, walk where you wished. When, but when you are old, you will stretch out your hands to another and will grit you and carry you where you do not wish. This he spoke Sigmund by the death that he would glorify God. And when he had spoken this, he said to him, follow me. In other words, he's prophesying he's going to live to an old age. Okay? But the whole thing here is that he knew that God went to restore him. Because he denied him three times. So it was a prophetic act. Listen, three times, do you love me, love me? And he, and he actually, you know, confessed his sin. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. So God restored him to that respect. But he still didn't give a certain part of his life to the Lord. Although the Lord came to restore him and stuff like that, he still did not give up the fear of man. Here it is. Because what happened is still in Acts 2 verse 14, you know, when the, the, the Holy Spirit came, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and they spoke in different languages and stuff. And then who was the first person to speak? Peter. He spoke in blah, blah, whatever, you that crucified, blah, blah, blah. And he sounded extremely holy. But he was, you know, the Spirit was in and upon him, so he spoke with boldness and stuff. And you will think to yourself, but wow, this person is on the ball. This person is with it, you know. And why? He's like, wow, there's nothing wrong with this person. Am I right? That's what happened. And he spoke and he said, you in Israel, you better repent, blah, blah, blah. And people did repent and so forth. I'm not going to get into that. But now further in the book of Galatians, now now we're moving further up in years. And now it's busy Paul coming back. He says, now, now when Peter had come to Antioch, this is Paul speaking now. I withstood him to his face because he was to be blamed. Now, Paul, you know, two-thirds of the New Testament. Now, he said to him, I said, Peter, that was with Jesus, and did all this stuff, and did uh, whatever. I said, I was stood him to his face. I cheered him, hey, me hey, but mark ye. <laughs> That's what he did. Because he was to blame, so he was blamed. For before certain men came from James, he would eat with the Gentiles, but when they came, he withdrew and separated himself, freeing those who were of the circumcision. In other words, he, when he was busy with these Gentiles, he was like, he was part of them. But then the other people, the Jews came, I, I can't be with these people. What are they going to say? So let me be with him quickly. No? no, no, no. So he's speaking bad of those people. Let me be with these people. Do you understand? He had still had a fear of man. Though he was with Jesus, though he was filled with the Holy Spirit, though he spoke with boldness, though he did the miracles. Interesting, that. He was prayed in tongues, he was baptized. He says here, And the rest of the Jews also played the hip hypocrite with him, so that even Barnabas, Barnabas was carried away with their hypocrisy. But when I saw that they were not straightforward about the truth of the gospel, I said to Peter before them all. So in other words, he tuned Peter straight. You're not running with the truth. Am I right? So Peter was lying. Peter lied. You think he's such a... He lied. He says, you are playing hypocrite within the hip hypocrite. And he goes further on and says here, but then he saw, uh, well, he's not straightforward about the truth of the gospel. Jesus, uh, Peter said, uh, I said to Peter to them all, If you being a Jew, live in the matter of a Gentile and not as a Jew. For why do you compel Gentiles to live as Jews? He knew the truth. So why, why do you must live like a Jew? Because he you know, was scared of the Jews going to do something to him. That's why he did that. He didn't want to use, lose face for these people. He was spiritual. He was baptized. And he walked with Jesus. I mean, this is not everything. Do you understand? 
He says, you are a Jew by nature and not a sinner of the Gentiles, knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by faith in Christ. Even we, we have believed in Christ Jesus, that we might be justified by faith in Christ and not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law, no flesh shall be justified. So he said, no, come on, you can't mix law and whatever. It's about grace. It's about faith. It's, you cannot be justified by the law. But he still wanted to use the law with the Gentiles. Why? Because he was fearful of the Jews. And he says, but if we seek to be justified by Christ, we also are, ourselves also um, found sinners in Christ. Therefore, is a, is a minister of sin? Certainly not. And that was, he was just busy explaining, you know, I thought down that as well, that stop trying to justify yourself that you are holy, holy, you are holy. If you keep on justifying certain things, you know, you are made a sinner. Okay? We don't do that. Do you, uh, do you see what, what's busy happening here? We have a whole thing that we come to Jesus and we are truly a new creature in Christ Jesus. But there's things in our hearts and in our lives we do not give to the Lord. And then it costs us. You can heal the sick and you can raise the dead. It does not matter. Get the God is irrevocable. But you have to get certain things in your heart to the Lord. I always say to God, please convict the crap out of me. <laughs> Let me not justify a single tittle. It means the smallest part of the Bible. Don't anything. I want to, please Lord, help me to walk in truth completely. Hebrews 5. Oh, he was 13, and verse 5. It says here, he was 13, verse 5. Let your conduct be without covetousness, be content with such things as you have. For himself has said, I will leave, never leave you nor forsake. So, so we may boldly say, the Lord is my help, I will not fear. What can man do to me? And, you know, if you look at this, this is Old Testament. So Peter knew all this stuff. What can man do to me? But he still had the fear of man. He still had the fear of man. And he still, he lied. The, the word Peter means, you know, uh, um, summoned by Jonah, means, it means that what? He's a wavering reed. Summoned by Jonah means you, you, you want, go with the wind, you go with this, you go with the flow. That's what happened to Peter. But God spoke into him, come on, you're actually a rock. You are not like this. Do you hear because Peter means a small piece of rock, a small part of the rock, which is Christ. But he was a wavering reed. He, that's why he goes this, and there's this, and he goes this. How many Christians do you know are like that? How many times do you feel in your heart you want to fail as well, and don't want to really stand up for the truth? Is it just me? <laughs> do you hear we, but we don't. Do you understand? We don't. Okay. He says, you know what? It says, um, we need to understand what can man do to us. And he knew the scriptures as well. Then he says here, and he says, Matthew 10, verse 32 to 33. Here he says, um, therefore, whoever confess me before men, him I will also, uh, will also confess before my Father who is in heaven. Whoever denies me before men, him I will also deny before my Father who is in heaven. So Jesus spoke this word. Peter he heard this stuff. He heard this stuff, yet he did not give it to the Lord. Do you hear what I'm saying? How many people sit in church, regularly, they hear the word, but they do the opposite. They know the truth, but do the opposite. The thing is, we don't judge. We do not judge at all. But I want you to understand why I try to explain to people on a regular basis, submit to one another. Be accountable, okay? Do not be, separate yourself from the church. Do not do, do own, don't give in to your own devices. Do you hear what I'm saying? Submit your relationships, submit these things, whatever, so that we can help you, so you not fall by the wayside. That is the whole idea. That's why God put the church into place, so that we don't fall. But when we do, there's somebody to help us up. Do you hear what I'm saying? To be accountable and all of this stuff. Because people want to serve God in their own strength, and I don't need church, I don't need this kind of stuff. And it's cost people. You see, and there's no, no going to fear now. <laughs> you know? No, no, ooh, it can happen to Peter, it can happen to me as well. 
you know. But we learn from these people. Do you understand? We learn from the Word of God so we get understanding not to make the same mistakes. Do you hear what I'm saying? Same thing here. What about Judas? Judas is very interesting. I think there's a lot of questions about Judas, you know. Because Judas betrayed Jesus. You see, but we don't understand. It's the same thing. God has so much compassion and grace that he walked three and a half years with Jesus. He did all the miracles. He saw the stuff. Yet he did not give a part of his heart to the Lord, which was what? Covetousness, greed. He, he had a greed in his heart. He had a greed thing in his heart. Do you see the soul thing? It's not a spiritual thing. It's a soul thing. I know people that are spiritual, do all the stuff, but their heart is running after money. They run after money. Money, 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 money. But they're spiritual, they're baptized, and they've done miracles. But they don't give that part to the Lord. They justify that part in their hearts. Do you hear what I'm saying? It's a soul part. It's a soul part, not the spiritual part. Because the Bible says in this lines, be blameless, spirit, soul, and body. You see, it's not a law thing. There's no law in it. It's that, but there's certain things in your life that you need to surrender to the Lord, that God can heal that part. God is a gentleman. He's not going to force you. He's not going to force you, okay? And it says here, was after three and a half years, Jesus tried to show him the stuff, whatever. Jesus saw all the stuff, and he says here, John 13, 27. Now, after the, the piece of bread, Satan entered him, which is Judas. And Jesus said to him, what, what you do, do it quickly. So after three and a half years, you know what? It was now enough. He opened the gap into his soul, and Satan entered. You know, and of course, Jesus betrayed. I started people... You know what, don't be fearful, but you have grace. But always fall upon grace. Don't give the devil a foothold. You see, sin and all of this stuff and all of these things, it does not influence your salvation. But it can cause harm in your life. Do you hear? A lot of things we need to give in our soul, because our soul is the emotional part, the inner part, you know. The silkundige, the psyche. Not the psyche, but the psyche. <laughs> You know, that has been damaged and God wants to heal that part. And we're not, we're still justifying this concerning certain things in our life when it comes to our emotional stuff. It might be, feel like a heavy teaching here, but I want people to understand it's still, this is basic stuff actually. This is not high grade stuff, but you need to hear it. You know, many people also, when they want to blame the devil for certain things, or they want to go and look for the devil, yeah, the devil's got this person shame. It's not him, it's the devil doing it. Oh, there's no responsibility. Do you hear what I'm saying? There's people do not take up responsibility for their lives. They say, yeah, it's that woman you gave me, Adam. <laughs> no, 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 Lord, it's that snake. <laughs> Do you hear what I'm saying? But you open a gap into your life and that stuff. I remember when, before I got saved, there was, I, I gave gap to the devil. I remember and stuff there, you know what, uh, one of the things that I messed up, um, I went through a divorce. Whose fault was that? God's. The devil's. Or was it mine? It was mine. You see, I opened a gap at that stage of my life. You know, and God did speak, but I've, just get behind me, Satan. <laughs> me, it was God. <laughs> you see, because there was an emotional hold in my, my soul that God wanted to heal, and I didn't give it to him. Do you understand what I'm saying? So it cost me, but thank God I recognized this stuff, and then God healed me again. Do you understand? I want people to understand that. You know, it's easy to blame it's the devil or that person. But let's take a responsibility. Do you understand? Even if there's truth about certain things that people did to you, take up the truth. They say, I should have never married or I should have never done this. It, it's my fault. You know? 
my wife said something very interesting because I got a phone call yesterday. Yeah, the devil is busy with this person. The devil is and the devil is. My wife hocks off and said, doesn't these people know the devil is on holiday this time of the year? <laughs> I said, so you blame the devil, but he's on the beach somewhere. So I'm just laughing. This is my wife. She's very funny, hey? <laughs> you know? Yeah, so it's, it's, it's very interesting to see. Because I want us to understand there's a beautiful grace that we have. We, I preach a lot of grace. I preach a lot of mercy. I preach a lot of, well, come on, God is for you. Because I preach to you who you are, not who you are not. Do you understand? And my whole thing is, is that there's a grace that's so beautiful, okay? But there's still a taking care of your soul. There's still a taking care of, you know what, come on, you know? Yes, Peter. Look at what Peter did. Why we, why we will not be exempt for that. Do you understand? But we mustn't go into fear. Do you hear what I'm saying? And also I try to explain to people, I said to my wife, I think I need to, we need to do reverse psychology to people. Because people come and ask opinion, and I said to them, no, you, you can't do that because this is going to go, blah, blah. and then they still do it. <laughs> so now we're going to say to them, no, go for it. <laughs> Maybe they will not do it. <laughs> you know? Because I always say to people, what is it to me? It doesn't influence my life. It really doesn't. I just give you, you know, what, what the truth is about the word, not to harm me, but to help you. So what pleasure do I, I don't take any pleasure out of it. It's your life. <laughs> you can mess it up. It's up to you. Do you understand? But people justify and people live in false hope. Do you understand? I like this in James 1, verse 12 to 18. This is a man who endures temptation. You will always have temptation. Sorry for you. <laughs> Could be anything. Anger, whatever, finances, things in your heart, whatever. There's many things. So there will always be things, you know, and especially if you have not dealt with certain things in your life, and your heart, that temptation will probably come up more. <laughs> Do you hear what I'm saying? If you have a problem with anger, you're going to get more taxes than ever before. <laughs> you hear what I'm saying? <laughs> Do you hear what I'm saying? That's how it is. But there it says, blessed man who endures temptation. Okay? I'm not exempt. You're not exempt. We will have it. I like what um, one of the um, Desert Fathers said. He says, you know what? He says, he said, the, young, the young monk or the, came to him. He says, Abba, because his father says, so, so when will this temptation, you know, because he had a problem with lust. And he goes, oh, no, 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 this and this. I say, well, I thank God for temptation. He's like, what? Yeah, I said, I thank God for temptation because without temptation, no one will get saved. It's pretty awesome. You see, if there was no temptation, no something, why would they, we, we need God <laughs> huh? to save us from ourselves? Why would we need that? And it was pretty amazing. I said, wow, that's pretty awesome. Uh, I like the Desert Fathers. I read a lot about them. I want to get into it. It's pretty awesome stuff. Okay? So, but yeah, also the days of us, many of the, the, the younger monks and so even the older monks did not deal with certain things in their soul. And it even cost them. And they were like, the desert fathers, they called the desert, and in the desert they prayed and had their own stuff there in Egypt, okay? And from a distance, you can actually see the glory of God glowing over that place. But even yet, they messed up. Even they messed up because they were not they were lying to themselves the one monk said yeah i'm going into town and one says i'm warning you do not go because i know you're going to be tempted and whatever he said no i'm strong enough i can handle it what happened to him he said that i regretted it because now i see the reward because what happens he went and stepped with a prostitute a monk do you hear what I'm saying? 
That's the whole thing I want to explain to people. They were spirit filled, very powerful people. You understand? It says here, James 1 verse 12 to 18 says, Blessed is the man who endures in danger, for when he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life which he, Lord, has promised to those who love him. Let no one say when he is tempted, I'm tempted by God, for God cannot be tempted by evil. Nor does he himself tempt anyone. God doesn't tempt us, you know, or test us with evil. He doesn't do that. But each one is tempted when he is drawn away by his own desires and enticed. So you see, we have own desires in our heart. That's, that's why we backslide. That's why we move away, because we're not willing to surrender to that things in our heart. Do you hear what I'm saying? We don't surrender stuff. It's like, some example, you, you know, date, date. You keep on making date, date, date. Why? Because you just want this nice car. You keep on making date. And then I'm never going to make, then you buy another car, breaking date. And then another credit card. Because you see what I'm saying? You are tempted for the material stuff, you know? It's not you cannot have those things, but deal with the stuff and then have those things in a better way. That's all it really is. Do you understand what I'm trying to say to you? But we are drawn away with our own evil in our hearts, not the devil, not this. But we are drawn away and then the devil jumps upon us. He makes it worse. Do you hear what I'm saying? Then it says, when desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin. And sin, when it's fully grown, brings forth death. It brings forth death. Do you understand? Because sin is not good. The Bible says sin kills. Do you understand what I'm saying? So it brings forth this. So you think, 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 think. You're not cutting the stuff off. Then it gives birth. And then suddenly you have that very nice car that cost you whatever. You bought 45% residual on it and whatever. Now you're stuck for how many years and the thing keeps on breaking as well. Not good. Do you hear what I'm saying? Then we justify ourselves. Yeah, but the dad, blah, 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 blah. we justify stuff. Do you hear what I'm saying? We move things in our heart and then we say, yeah, it was, it was that woman's fault that had that court, short Thing, thing that made me go there. <laughs> you hear what I'm saying? So we blame that. No, you know what I'm saying? Cut stuff off before it gives birth. Do you hear what I'm saying? Don't always think, Baba said, unless you stand, stand, you must fall. I try to protect myself. I try to protect my relationship with my wife, you know, all the time. Try to protect your relationship, protect your testimony on a regular, protect it, you know. I say to people, protect my testimony. As I try to protect you, protect me. Do you hear what I'm saying? At the end of the day, that's what we do. We're here for one another. It's not me saying you, you help me as well. You help my wife as well. Do you understand? How it operates. Then 1 Peter 4, verse 6, 1 to 6. It says, Therefore, since Christ suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourself also with the same mind, for he who has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sinning. It seems sounds weird. But when you are suffering in the flesh, it's like this. The things you want to, maybe when you, were, you just got saved, your flesh is still, because you used to just go out and draw and do some stuff. Now you're safe and you feel your flesh still wants to do that stuff. That means it's good because before you didn't worry. But now you're like, you have this battle in the flesh not to do it anymore. Do you hear what I'm saying? It means actually you've been ceased, you actually cease from sinning. Weird, no. It's weird because that the temptation is there still, but you're not giving it. The temptation is there. But yes, I said, but what if you do fall? I said, yeah, you do fall, but how do you feel? Do you feel yucky? Yes, good. <laughs> Do you hear what I'm saying? And you just get up, be accountable, people pray for you and help you further with it. Do you understand what I'm saying? But you still have this thing in the face. It says that's a good thing. It means you cease from sinning. Weird, but it's awesome. It's how it operates. That you no longer should live the rest of your time in the flesh of the lust of men, 
but the will of God. For we have spent enough of our past lifetime in doing the will of the Gentiles. He says, you have done enough of this past stuff. Why do you want to do it again? Why do you want to justify this stuff? That's why a lot of people that get saved and stuff, they get deluded with this stuff. Yeah, but God understands the things and whatever. Says, no, the Bible says, you've done, don't do this stuff. That's not who you are anymore. It might not influence your salvation, but you're going to have hell on earth. Going, you might get hurt. You might maybe lose your life. Being stupid. Doing those things of the, old time, of, the old, of the past. But I tell people, when you are truly saved, you can't enjoy your sin anymore. You cannot enjoy your sin anymore. You, I'm saying, I, and you, you, your flesh is lying to you. I mean, now when you come to the Lord, you say a small white lie, or you handle somebody wrong, how do you feel? Nice. <laughs> no, not at all. Why? Because there's a conviction in you. You see, I know I did it. I didn't like it, but I still did it. But I didn't enjoy it. Before years went off like this, nothing really happened. <laughs> you hear what I'm saying? So you can't even enjoy your sin anymore. That's pretty awesome. <laughs> you see, see, in regard to these things, I think it's strange that you do not run with them in the same flood of dispensation, speaking evil of you. So what's wrong with that? What's wrong with that? What's wrong with that? What's wrong with that? What do you do? What's wrong with that? So I think, oh, you're so holy now, nah. That's you, like it. Yeah, actually, I am. <laughs> huh? Do you hear what I'm saying? That's what people think of you when you don't do this. Are oh, you judging me? You're judging me? I don't judge you. I just say it's not good doing that. You're judging me? No, I'm not judging you. Run if you want to do what you want to do. I'm just saying that's going to cost you, but anyway, you go ahead. If you want help, I'll help you. The Bible says we restore one another with meekness and gentleness. So, if you, please, you don't have to do this, but I'm here to help you. Do. So people will judge you. You're so holy. I said, hey, yes, by grace, I am holy. Okay? But none of us has reached perfection like Paul says. But I don't justify stuff. They will give an account to him who is ready to judge the living and the dead. For this reason, the gospel was preached also to those who are dead, that they might be judged according to me, blah, blah, blah. But you understand what I'm saying here? He says in 1 Peter, goes further on, it says it from verse 14. If you are reproached for the name of Christ, blessed are you, for the same spirit of, uh, of glory and of God rests upon you. On their part, he is blasphemed, but on your part, he is glory. But let no one of you suffer as a murderer, thief, or evildoer, or as a busybody in other people's matters. Yet if, if uh, anyone suffers as Christians, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God in this matter. And he's saying, says, come on, don't do evil stuff and say, I'm suffering for the Lord, you know. Don't do evil stuff and say, yeah, it's for the Lord. No, it's not. It's wrong. Do you hear? And people don't understand. Is that, that's why I try to explain to people, I need to preach you more and more who you are. Don't justify. That's not who you are. That's why Holy Spirit convicts us of righteousness, not of sin. He says, that's not who you are. You hear what I'm saying? But people still keep on justifying. It says, it's for the Lord. And God is in this. I'm working through this. God knows I'm working. God is with me in this. I'm like, no. That's evil. God is not in this. Do you hear what I'm saying? Then he says, verse 9, he says, Therefore, let those who suffer according to the will of God commit their souls to Him in doing good as to a faithful creator. In other words, commit your soul to Him. I know we all have some cracks in the soul. I don't know. I can't draw up now. Yeah, I want to show you teaching and stuff. But there's many parts in our soul that is cracked. Because sometimes what happens is, is that why are you the way that you are? Why, why do you struggle with affection? Why do you struggle? Why do you quickly get angry or apprehensive about certain things? You know what I'm saying? Because something happened to you with a little boy, a little girl or something. So there's a crack in your soul. 
But that crack can become bigger and the devil can jump upon it and they call it, you know, you are now possessed. No, you're not. It's just the devil jumps upon it and you become oppressed. Do you hear? And then people, like in churches, they want to just cast a demon out. But if we get to the root of the matter, that sore part, and let God heal that part and confess it, not just it, then that crack will become healed. And then those spirit thing that jumps upon it will leave. But we first want to do the deliverance. That, that doesn't work. You know? It's not how we blame the devil, devil, devil. No. You see? Why do we have these things? Because we, we are still damaged people. Do you understand? But although you have received the fullness, there's still damaged part in our hearts, in our soul. Because we messed up. Now, not to be funny, but all the people have messed up more than the younger people. You know why? Because it was just long on the earth. You see? But it doesn't mean the younger people is not that messed up. <laughs> Do you hear what I'm saying? But the whole thing is, you know what? Give these things to the Lord. Don't have regret. Know, know certain things. You know, same thing with my, myself and my wife. She knows there's some emotional things I'm still working because, because of um, my abuse that I had. There is because of my mother and my father or, you know, it's things that happen in my life, you know. Come on. How would you be if you were abused and you had seven different fathers and you were in 12 different schools? That was me. Do you think I have a bit of work? <laughs> What's wrong with you? <laughs> you hear what I'm saying? But God has brought me to a place of healing and stuff, a lot on that part, and so forth. But now then jumps up and said, Lord, I'll give it to you again. So there's a great healing in me already happened. There's a massive healing in me happening already. I mean, it's already God's done so much great stuff in me, and He's still doing it. Do you understand? But I don't justify the stuff. And I don't blame my parents for that anymore. But I vent and I give it to the Lord and I speak to my wife and whatever, you know. And I'm accountable to people. So I don't want to give the devil a gap in this part of my life. Because my dad did ABC or my other dads did ABC and my mom did ABC, you know. And that caused me to be this all not lacking the head. You hear what I'm saying? <laughs> so that kind of part is your soul part. And that's what the Lord is saying, give it to you. The good thing is with Peter, at the end, he was okay. The end, because um, Jesus prayed for him. But it took him years, and he went through some stuff. Do you understand? But he got that at the end, which is good. Praise the Lord for that. You know? So that's why I like this, the Peter, because we all have some Peter you know, in us. You know? That you want to justify stuff. And, and at the moment, we are so full of faith. And, Ooh, never, never, never. And then we do it. <laughs> I've met many people say, funny enough, I had a guy called Peter. <laughs> he actually says, I will never backslide. I will never do it. And you know what? And I'm going to run over. And I will never, you know, get divorced. And I will never do it. I said to him, by God's mercy, God's strength, you know, and by God's grace, you will never. No, I will never. <laughs> Six months later, married, got divorced, and backslide. <laughs> in, in, in a year. Do you hear what I'm saying? Because it was not to really, it was, many people suppress certain things in their hearts. And not willing to deal with these things. And that caused damage in their relationship. Like I said, the good things, you are saved. It's saved. There's a lot of people that are saved and they love the Lord. But man, they're not lacking the head. Do you hear what I'm saying? And you don't want to be like that person. I say to people, if you need to go to a psychologist, go to a psychologist. But don't rely on a psychologist. Don't rely on the polls. Hello? Do you hear what I'm saying? But put God in it. And you're not going to stay there. And they're not going to fix your problems for you. Even myself, when you come for counseling and stuff... I'm not there to fix your problems. 
I'm here to help you. Okay? In that, you still have to work out your own salvation. But don't, you know, I've known many people, and they, they, uh, they always have a, a money problem. A money problem. A money problem. A money problem. And how, we can't get this thing, you can't get this, you can't get this. And I said to him, come for us. So, can I ask you a question? So, how long has this problem it's been going on for over 12 years? So now Reed tells me this is definitely not a God problem. Because 12 years means you've not surrendered something, you know? And then the whole thing about all of this stuff come out, and I said, you know what? The whole thing is you are relying on men to fix your, your, your financial issues. You're not relying on God to fix financial And look at me like this. I said, can I ask you something? In 12 years, how do you get by? Do you borrow money all the time? Yes, I do. So they're borrowing money all the time and never allowed God to say, listen, Lord, okay, you are my security. So they had a security issue in their soul. They had a thing with money and they needed to give it to the Lord. I said to them, from this day, don't, don't ask any people for money anymore. Don't ask to borrow money at all even from this day. They were extremely upset with me. Extremely upset with me. They were not very long in the church. <laughs> and you know what? Their life is still the same. Or even worse now. Do you hear what I'm saying? Which rather say, you know what? I don't like what you said. I hate what you said. But help me through it. Do you hear what I'm saying? Help me through it. Okay. This is a tough thing. Do you want you better pray for me? Because when I'm not going to make ends meet, I want to phone people and ask for money. Do you hear what I'm saying? It's a hard thing, you know? People come in with anger problems or this problem or that habit or that kind of stuff. Say, come on, let me help you through this stuff, man. Not like I've arrived. You've just heard my testimony. My wife knows I'm still not like her sometimes, you know? But I don't justify stuff. Do you hear what I'm saying? And that we can help you. Give that soul part to, your, 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 to, 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 to the Lord. Let the Lord work with that emotional side. Because you are an emotional being. I mean, right. I mean, God is also an emotional being. God's give you an emotion, you know. But there's so much cracks in our soul. I mean, the stupid thing is now, all women are the same. All men are the same. You have a problem. <laughs> Do you hear what I'm saying? But you come here, oh, Jesus is awesome. Do you hear what I'm saying? I try to explain to people this stuff. Do not let God work with your soul side. You know, that soul thing. You know, that soul stuff. You're now of a spiritual being. So the Spirit can come now and heal that bit. The Spirit of God can come and restore that anger. You know? can restore that, because we all have anus, isn't it right? This, we all have, I mean, in some way or form, we were a child or something, or maybe last year, relationships, come on, one of the biggest anus is relationships, okay? Or your kids, or things, you know, it's anus stuff, it's not nice, you know? And then, it causes you to have a bit of a conk in the head, you know? Give it to the Lord. Give it to the Lord, that God heal you in that part. Because I've seen it many times. I see people being saved for many years. And then it's like suddenly, it's like these people are off, totally backslidden, totally off. They totally come off the rails, whatever. And you think to yourself, but what happened? Were they not really real? No, were like Peter. They were real at that moment. They were real people. They were genuinely sincere in that state. But there's certain things that never allowed the Lord. They were... Just, no, um, I'm just being this present. I'm just being this spirit. I'm just, so you want to hide from truth. You want to be in the spirit all the time and not dealing with the soul issues. Huh? Christians do that. But you're spirit, soul, and body. Because if your soul is not lacquer, it's going to influence your body. You're going to pick up weight or lose weight. 
You're not going to dress nicely anymore, whatever anymore. Am I right? When women go through some emotional issues, what's the first thing they change? <laughs> huh? Do you hear what I'm saying? I don't want to change something. I'm just, do you hear what I'm saying? How many people, my wife says to me, just, you're an emotional eater? <laughs> so yeah, I'll repent, I am. <laughs> I said, I can't get away from that, I am. Because <laughs> sometimes I get so like, oh Lord, I see what this, this stuff is doing to people. And I'm like, oh, it's not me, I'm emotional about the people. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm crying for the people. Not me, I'm... I know my stuff, you know. I, can, I know my stuff where I'm right. But I started, mm. I said to my wife, where's the chocolates? <laughs> where's the cookies? She looked at me like, yes, my ears are emotional. <laughs> I said, yeah, I'm proud of it. Give me the stuff, man. <laughs> and then as I was eating, I went, <laughs> and then a couple of minutes later, okay, I had enough, okay. <laughs> Isn't it right? You see what it what it does. We that is one of my things. I'm more emotional about people because I love people so much. I want to hurt them. <laughs> is that crazy? <laughs> I'm gonna freaking I'm gonna strangle you because you just like you. <laughs> you know? I'm going to hurt you because I love you. Drink. <laughs> See what's doing to you. I want to do that, but then I go and eat. <laughs> it's actually your fault. You make me fat. <laughs> it's that congregation you gave me, Lord. <laughs> Amen. Is that okay?